This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Joanne Fries. She is the president and CEO of Candente Copper Corp. It's a publicly traded company. I've got a few symbols for you. DNT on both the TSX and the BVL, as well as CCOUF in the U.S. And Candente will be presenting at our upcoming in-person investor conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase, happening May 3rd through the 5th, 2022, at Bally's Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. For more information, to meet Joanne, to see their presentation, please go to planetmicrocapshowcase.com. And with that, Joanne, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? Thank you very much for hosting us. It's great to have you. So this is our first time doing an interview together. So can you start us off with a quick overview and history of the company? Absolutely. I lived in Peru. I'm a geologist in exploration, been an exploration geologist since, I hate to say it, but I will say it, since 1981. Um, a little bit earlier for part-time, but full-time since 81. In any case, I was in Peru in the 90s and moved there with my kids and my husband at the time. And um, a lot of discoveries were being made. It was just an amazing country to be in because it had just opened up for foreign investment. And it was becoming, I mean, at Yanacocha, it was thought to have three to five million ounces of gold. Of course, it's over 50. And to Mina, you know, biggest zinc mine, Scarn in the world. Um, and yeah, all sorts of amazing discoveries being made. So when I, um, at some point after about three years, I'd, I'd worked for some companies that had made some major discoveries and, and um, got well known in the investment community and somebody approached me and suggested I start a company with the Peruvian geologist um, Freddie Wonky who had named um, the P Arena deposit after his daughter and not that he was the sole person in that discovery of course um, but in any case um, so we, we we hummed and hawed and I said oh first my kids are too young you know think about it later but but it didn't take too long we decided it was a good idea so in 97 we created a private company and then I, I moved back to Canada and started looking for investment. And we were able to raise about a million dollars in seed capital. Just went out and staked our own claims where we thought there could be another P Arena, another Yanacocha, that sort of thing. Went public in 2000 um, on the junior um, exchange um, in Vancouver. And then it was the Vancouver Stock Exchange. Um, and then Along the way, we, we had the opportunity to buy a copper, well, compete in, a, in a, um, an auction for a copper project that at the time didn't look economic, you know, 60 to 80 cents a pound of copper. And, and it didn't have a lot of drill holes, but it looked like it would have certainly, it was a porphyry for sure that had some good grades in it. Um, so it was very interesting. And, and when I said to my partner, Freddie, well, if we can get it cheap enough, we can just hang on to it and, you know, wait for copper to move or see if there's some aspect of it that makes it easier like like leaching or something um easier recovery so we acquired that for seventy five thousand dollars and just waited and then 2004 of course copper started moving and we were able to raise money to start drilling and basically it took the life of the company because it just had a more um more well better success rate in the exploration each year so eventually we actually um, split our company. So it was Candente Resource Corp. It became Candente Gold Corp and Candente Copper Corp. And then we've changed Candente Gold to Chali Gold for the name. Um, but they're trading under different symbols. So, so Candente Copper Corp is what we're talking about today. Candy Reaco has three porphyry centers, I'll call it. The main one we've done all our work is Candy Reaco Norte. And measured and indicated it's over 9 billion pounds of copper. 2 million ounces of gold and 59 million ounces of silver. Now there's also an inferred resource to add to that. And then now we've got a resource on the second porphyry, which is Kanyarak Osur. So add it all together, um, which of course I'm supposed to give lots of details and please anybody listening to this, look at our website and see all the resource backup. Um, 14 billion pounds of copper, 4 million ounces of gold, and I think about a little over 90 million ounces of silver between the two deposits so far. Now, we did engineering studies at the 2011, 12, 13, 14, um, some pre-feasibility and feasibility level, but we've now replaced those with a new PEA that we just completed with a Senko. And what we did is we, we decided to see if um, a smaller company could build it. So rather than something that's 95,000 tons per day or 110,000 tons per day for, I'll just call it in the neighborhood of a $2 billion 
CapEx, but of course, very attractive NPV, even at 250 copper. Now we have um, the PEA for starting at 40,000 tons per day, ramping up to 80, and a CapEx of, of just over a billion dollars, and an NPV at 350 of also of, of matching it pretty much over a billion. So we think it's a very attractive project. Um, using 450 copper, of course, that NPV goes well up. Um, Absolutely. And, yeah. So, so I mean, you you hit on my next question a little bit just in, in that last bit there, but maybe maybe a, get a, a little bit more context. But what would you say makes this project as it exists right now unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? You know, I know you've started going into a few shows and talking about the story a little bit more. So, lo love to hear your thoughts there. Yeah. Well, both Haywood and RFC Ambrian have done recent research reports comparing um, all the copper projects they like. And we're in the top 10 of 23 projects identified by RFC Ambrian. Ambrian. And we're one of 18 assets um, selected by Haywood to be, you know, um, considered by majors to looking to acquire. Now we're also, um, of all that, we are, um, um, tenth largest in the world of develop of late stage copper projects, so undeveloped, but and um, fifth tying for fifth for highest grade. So that alone just tells you the story, right? Absolutely. So then, you know, to close us out here today, um, from what you can tell us, what would you say are some of the company's value catalysts now for the rest of 2022? Yeah. So we're, we'll be just launching into feasibility soon. We're just um, closing financing. We've got two offers on the table right now for financing and um, get that closed, launch feasibility, and then also launch on the EIA, um, which is required for building an operation. So we're going to do both of those hand in hand. At the same time, we're applying for drilling permits for Kenyak Osur and the third porphyry, which is Quebrada Verde. And so we would be doing more resource building there, we, we expect. And, um, and so just moving this project along very aggressively and getting to ready to build or ready to develop it. Very good. Well, Joanne, with that, where can our audience go and find more information on Candente? Oh, of course, candentecopper.com. <laughs> very good. Well, Joanne, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck, stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you in Vegas. Okay, me too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.